okay so uh, uh, this is the course of analog communication so what we'll do today this probably the first uh, class of, uh, we'll briefly discuss about uh, what should be the outline of this particular course uh, what are the things that should be uh, means uh, generally conveyed through this course and uh, what are the concepts that will be built up in this course so that should be our uh, first target so initial uh, one or one hour probably will be spending on that and basically we'll try to capture what do we mean by communication as such and where it is required what are the basic terminology that is being used in communication why those things are required and then we'll go into the uh, depth of communication and especially the analog communication okay so so whenever we talk about analog communication uh, before even talking about analog communication let us try to see uh, what we mean by communication so communication generally means that we have some source of information so uh, if i just say uh, some source of information that might be generated from uh, any kind of uh, source like it might be just voice uh, uh, like uh, now i am talking uh, so this can be a source of information because my vo voice actually contains some amount of information it might be just the video you are watching uh, it it contain information uh, it might be some pictures it might be some text whatever it is it is some source of information it might be from uh, any uh, particular kind of source but first we have to take the source of information this source of information might have a originator or it might be originated from some particular place in communication what do we mean that somebody else we need to transmit or we need to actually transfer this information as fast as possible so that's actually communication so basically there should be a recipient or i should call a receiver it might be far away from the source itself and source should be associated with a particular transmitter which will take those information convert it into a particular uh, form of signal we will we'll discuss about that later on and then transmit it through a media which is very important in communication which is called channel and through the channel at a distant place uh, to the receiver it will be transmitted so basically uh, if we just define that's where the message signal comes into picture so from the source of information we get the message signal it might be uh, we'll we'll discuss about what kind of signals can be generated we have just briefly told that it might be voice it might be picture it might be video it might be just computer generated data whatever it is so that has to be first transmitted and this is here it is called transmitted signal we'll we'll see how the message signal and transmitted signal are different uh, there must be this transmitter must uh, do some processing on the signal to make this communication uh, sustainable and make this communication successful and then it will be launched into a channel so channel uh, is a very important uh, part of communication that's the thing which actually uh, either physically or virtually connects the source to the destination or transmitter to the receiver so it might be a wireless channel where we uh, just transmit it or uh, radiate it in the wireless in forms of antenna or uh, other means and then it will be just propagated through electromagnetic wave through the uh, channel and it will be received at the uh, desired location or uh, receiver so that's one form of channel there might be channels which are uh, not like this uh, air so it's it's uh, like uh, wired channel like our twisted pair earlier being used for telephony or it might be coaxial cable that is being used for uh, television transmission or it might be uh, recent advancement uh, which is coming up it's called fiber optic uh, cable so it might be any kind of channel that effectively transfer this transmitted signal through it okay so that's that's the functionality of the channel uh, and uh, once this is being transmitted we should be able to get some received signal 
over here. So, after the channel. Now, you might be asking should this transmitted signal and received signal be same? Effectively not. So, channel does something to the transmitted signal. Uh, what are the things that channel does? That is also another very important part of communication. So, we need to know exactly uh, what channel can do to my signal and we need to know how to really combat any, any kind of uh, impairments it puts on the transmitted signal because transmitted signal is my information or it is carrying my information. So, we I need to exactly know how it is contaminating my transmitted signal and then in the received signal whatever we get after this contamination or distortion, uh, we get it to the receiver and then receiver does something uh, to get back to my information. So, it is that information. So, we have to think about as much faithfully we can uh, actually uh, put from source to uh, receiver. Uh, better the transmission quality, better the communication that we are looking for. So, it is very uh, important that whatever we are, whatever information we are transmitting, suppose we are sending an email and that is faithfully transmitted over this entire chain, uh, then only we will say that that is a valid communication. Because if I uh, write something and that uh, writing is being distorted uh, with some grammatical mistakes, spelling mistakes, some words missing that will not be faithful uh, representation of the input source uh, information. So, that is very important that uh, whatever we do in between in this three blocks of transmission channel of course, we do not have any hand, uh, we do not we don't have anything in hand. So, in the transmitter and receiver block knowing what the channel is. So, we need to uh, very clearly know what kind of channel we have or we need to use or choose channel, what kind of channel we should use for a particular transmission. So, knowing all these things, how do we really do my transmission and how do I do or employ something at the receiver side to get back my information faithfully. So, this is what communication actually does. So, if you if just we have to say some examples, there are plenty of examples you know. Uh, or telephony is one of the probably oldest example of communication. So, where uh, whatever voice signal we generally generate. So, what happens? Uh, there are few steps whenever you do uh, communication. So, the steps of first step 1 generation of message signal. Okay, so, that is probably the first step. Now, that is like uh, for uh, I have taken that example of voice communication or you can you can uh, talk about video communication okay, so, or broadcasting video. So, all those things. So, whatever you do first you generate the message signal. So, like I am uh, communicating, I am talking. So, that that is the message signal. It uh, contains some amount of information in inside it. So, first generating that message signal. Then what we have to do is second step that we need to describe this message signal in terms of some set of symbols. Okay. Uh, so, this set of symbols will be mostly electrical. So, it might be like uh, I am creating I means or I am uh, just delivering a speech. Now, this speech signal there will be a transducer most probably which will actually convert it into a equivalent electrical signal. So, that we can uh, say that uh, that is uh, some symbol set. So, it might be just voltage level of that electrical signal. So, uh, over time whenever I am uh, means varying my speech or uh, my pitch and all those things uh, all those quality of uh, my speech. Uh, accordingly, it will be translated to a equivalent electrical signal which might in time. So, if we plot that in time voltage, so it might look like something like this according to my variation. So, this particular signal, so we can call that as set of symbols. So, it might be just uh, time varying voltage level or time varying current level whichever way you want to represent it. So, it should be that message signal through a help of transducer whatever form that message signal in, uh, input signal has it must be converted uh, mostly we are talking about electrical uh, communication. So, it must be converted to equivalent electrical signal. So, that is the first stage. Okay. So, or we should say second stage. 
the third stage of this communication is then we need to encode these symbols sorry, these symbols into a suitable form that can be transmitted over this uh, media whatever channel we have okay so what do we mean by suitable form so already we have got this electrical signal is that good enough for transmission so this is where transmitter uh, we have talked about this, those three stages so this is where after the transducer when my uh, equivalent signal um, maybe voice or video whatever it is that is being converted to electrical signal now it's my task to actually convert this into a suitable form uh, that will be another signal uh, of course but that should be suitable form so that it helps in transmitting okay so this is for the transmission uh, purpose so we need to convert it into a suitable form so there are multiple suitable form we will we'll discuss about them but right now i'm just giving one example so one suitable form is first of all we need to modulate this signal uh, why modulation that probably right now it will not be very clear but we'll come back to that why that signal needs to be modulated but right now we just take that that it needs to be modulated what do i mean by modulation so basically this signal has to be rided by a modulator okay so what is our modulator so modulator generally is a sinusoidal carrier so it's a high frequency sinusoidal carrier okay so we can call that as either sin uh, some a sin omega c t of frequency uh, omega c or 2 pi f c or it can be even represented as a cos omega c t any any form of sinusoidal which has a frequency uh, which is represented by omega c or equal to 2 pi f c f c is a frequency of that sinusoidal okay a is the amplitude of that sinusoidal now what we need uh, what we mean by uh, converting into, into into a suitable form is this that this particular sinusoidal we take that as carrier like uh, whenever we are sending a uh, suppose uh, letter so what we do we put it in some envelope it's almost uh, means this carrier particularly is almost uh, serving the purpose of an envelope so it carries the information and at the end it delivers that information and after that it is not required so basically we put it inside that inside the envelope like we uh, whenever we mail anything we put inside a envelope then envelope is carried and then after that the envelope will be opened up the letter is delivered then the envelope has no value okay so similar thing this is a carrier and on this carrier we try to put our information so suppose let's say our information is let's take an example that our information is something like this this is one typical signal which is like our information so let's say it's a uh, we all are familiar with uh, binary or digital form of uh, data so let's say it is 101 and this is this is actually time so this is the signal we want to transmit so what we do is eventually like this we have the carrier we have already seen that the amplitude of that carrier should now vary according to the amplitude of this particular message signal okay so this is our message signal converted to electrical and now we have a carrier which is like this a sinusoidal carrier and the amplitude of this carrier which is this part must be varying over time which almost mimics this message signal so how this will look like if i modulate it it should be looking like this so basically the amplitude should be having this envelope inside the carrier should reside something like this so what is happening as now you can see the carrier almost remains the same its frequency its uh, oscill oscillation uh, period and everything that remains same 
what is only happening is the amplitude of the carrier is instantaneously varying as the signal message signal is varying. So, it means that this particular carrier is carrying that message signal on top of it like an envelope and it is being carried over the amplitude. Okay. So, there can be another way of doing it any sinusoidal is characterized by two or three things right now we will take two example one is it is amplitude. So, whenever we write sinusoidal it is a cos omega c t right. So, the amplitude is one part of it which characterizes a sinusoidal or it is a parameter of the sinusoidal another part is this frequency. So, now I have the option of varying any of them. Okay. So, either I can vary this amplitude which I have done over here or what I can do I can keep the amplitude fixed and I can start varying this frequency. Okay. So, if I wish to vary the frequency how it will look like? So, the same thing if I modulate with this particular signal it will look like this. So, suppose I have uh, this particular portion 1, this particular portion 0, then 1, then 0 followed by. So, in 1 I will be giving a frequency which is higher. So, this will have higher frequency and then while 0 this frequency will be slightly lower. Okay. That means, the oscillation period will be means the time period will be higher and then again 1. So, it will be high frequency and so on. So, what will be happening if anybody sees this it is actually there is a central carrier and as we are transmitting different kind of symbol let us say for uh, this case 1 and 0 2 voltage level actually. So, basically the carrier frequency is varying it is becoming suppose I have carrier frequency omega c. So, it is becoming omega c plus some delta omega at this moment and it is becoming omega c minus some delta omega at this moment. Okay. So, that is another way of varying things. So, basically what will happen now you can see if I transmit either this signal or that signal at the receiver end I will be able to actually decode my symbol because I know either if I know this is means modulated at the amplitude then I know I have to just track the amplitude of the signal how it varies with time forget about the carrier this internal variation I can take out I can just track the amplitude and I can roughly get the sim signal back or otherwise I can just try to see what is the frequency and how it is varying. So, if I just uh, means uh, track the frequency I can immediately see this this is the portion where high amplitude is being transmitted because high frequency is being transmitted this is the portion where lower frequency is being transmitted. So, therefore, automatically the message symbol should be having low amplitude. So, basically either this or this will have the same representation at the receiver. Okay. So, this is where the third step we were talking about this third step encode this symbol suitable into a suitable form of signals which is good for transmission. So, this is what we are trying to do over here. Now, you might be asking why we are actually we could have directly transmitted this signal why we are doing these things. So, that is the first question probably will come to any communication engineers mind why we are doing these things. There are few reasons of course, the reason will not be directly clear right now, but probably little bit ahead in the course it will be much more clearer, but right now we can just say uh, uh, some reason. One of the reason is see look at the carrier deliberately I have chosen very high frequency. Uh, the reason is generally whenever you are transmitting suppose you are transmitting through an antenna okay, and you are receiving through an antenna let us say it is wireless transmission. So, we are actually putting an antenna. Now, the antenna designing guideline is if you have read already antenna designing guideline and a little bit of electromagnetics. So, you know that if whatever electromagnetic wave we are putting. So, whatever that sinusoidal carrier will be putting that will be converted to the equivalent electromagnetic wave of the same frequency. Now, whatever wavelength it has the antenna dimension should be equivalent to that wavelength or okay. 
So, now if I just transmit it at a very low frequency like this one, this might be having a lower frequency, it is varying slowly like the voice signal, it varies very slowly, it has the highest frequency component which is just 4 kilohertz. Okay. So, whatever voice uh, tonal quality we have, it has the highest frequency which is 4 kilohertz. Okay. So, and uh, many of them, uh, many of the components, voice components are even lower frequency uh, starting from 300 hertz uh, to almost like, uh, it does not go up to 4, uh, maybe 3.3 .3 kilohertz or something like that. Okay. So, if you take those frequency component, it is very low frequency. Correspondingly, uh, the wavelength will be very high and what will happen? The antenna size, because that has to be equivalent to the wavelength. Uh, size that will be very big. So, to make a transmission I have to build a huge antenna, very big antenna maybe uh, size of this building and all those things. So, that is not really desirable that I want to make a point to point communication between one person to another person. Suppose, he is carrying a mobile phone uh, through which he wish to communicate and his antenna is very big that is not uh, feasible or practical. So, that is why we need to whenever we are transmitting things the frequency component of that has to be really high, because we are radiating through antenna uh, and antenna size if we wish to faithfully transmit and receive that signal, antenna size has to be comparable. Okay. So, that is one thing which is required. So, immediately it comes to our mind that maybe the frequency has to be translated or the frequency has to be very high somehow. I have a voice which is having highest frequency component probably 3.3 .3 kilohertz can I take this to somewhere higher frequency? So, one way of doing it later on you will see mathematically, right now we are not saying, we are just stating that, that some way of doing it is this modulation or putting it inside the carrier, it will actually take it, translate it into a very high frequency. And effectively what happens, your voice modulated with that carrier will have a very high frequency component and correspondingly antenna size requirement will be very low very small size, tiny size antenna will suffice. So, that is one very practical reason why we need to do modulation. The second reason is, which probably will not be very clear right now, but I am just uh, telling it. See, on the air, if you wish to communicate, that is always true, that if I wish to communicate what I need, this particular air media is a shared media. Okay. If I wish to communicate, so everybody else needs to communicate and they want to communicate whenever they wish. If two of us are trying to or multiple of us are trying to communicate simultaneously to multiple other fellows and we are using the same media, what will happen? They will actually come into the same media and they will collide. Whatever information we have, they will get mixed and then it will be very difficult at the receiver end to actually segregate them or separate them. Now, what I am saying without any proof, later on we will prove that this modulation basically segregate these things beforehand. So, whenever we are transmitting what we do, I am just telling you the technique, later on we will prove that that technique helps. So, we actually choose different different carrier frequency. So, for my transmitter, suppose station 1 is trying to transmit to station 2 okay, wirelessly and station 3 simultaneously wish to transmit to station 4 in the same media. Now, what he can do? He can take a carrier frequency of f 1 and he can take a carrier frequency of f 2, where f 1 is not equal to f 2, to two different frequencies and there are some criteria, what should be the separation between them and all those things we will prove later on. But right now, what we are saying that if they choose separate frequencies, then there is a possibility that both the signals can coexist in the same media, but they will not superimpose. Basically, they will have different frequency location in the frequency domain and you can later on, you are all probably aware of filtering at the frequency domain. So, you can always put band pass filtering to choose your own carrier and then you can demodulate it or you can get your uh, signal back. So, this is one way of multiplexing multiple simultaneous transmission into the same media without disturbing each other okay, or without interfering each other. So, that is another uh, reason why we should actually put a signal into a carrier. Okay. So, these things will be 
far more clearer when we uh, define them uh, more clearly and mathematically. Okay. So, now going back to our steps. So, we have discussed about third step, right. So, what should be the fourth step? Fourth step is, so we have already encoded into a suitable form. So, uh, whatever may be the requirement, we have now discussed about that and uh, we will be actually doing that at the transmitter side. So, this is being done at the transmitter. So, and this part is being done, this is the uh, source where message is generated, this is where the transducer converts converted into electrical signal and then from that electrical signal we actually generate a suitable form which can be transmitted. So, that is the uh, duty of the transmitter. And then after the transmitter we actually transmit it over the channel. Okay. So, that might be done by the help of media or any other form that is required to transmit. Okay. So, uh, means this has to be by antenna pro, uh, probably I was uh, talking about. So, you can you can put antenna suppose it is wireless media then put uh, through antenna convert it into electrical electromagnetic wave and uh, radiate it uh, over the channel. Okay. So, this is the transmission part. After the transmission part in the receiver side we need to have some more things. So, if I just go to the receiver part there whatever encoding we have done we have to it is like that envelope we are putting our letter inside the envelope at the other side if I wish to get the message we have to open the envelope we have to tear apart the envelope uh, get rid of that envelope and then read the letter right or get the message. So, we have to do the same thing the reverse process. So, here we are putting inside envelope that means we are modulating. So, at the other side we have to accordingly demodulate the signal. So, that is the fifth step. Fifth step is decoding or demodulating. So, we are just writing it decoding you will see why that is written as decoding. There are multiple other steps also other than demodulation. Demodulation is one of the steps. So, decoding is the fifth step and sixth step is from after decoding it is again it goes to the transducer because finally, I want to hear it. So, it should be in my speaker. Okay. So, that trans it is reverse form of transducer or uh, another transducer which convert the electrical equivalent electrical signal into the voice signal if I uh, or speech signal if we wish. So, recreating the original message signal. So, that is the four steps which are involved over here and in this four step as we have discussed our focus will be the transmitter and the receiver. What transmitter does and what receiver does and we have to also choose a media accordingly or the channel accordingly and we need to be aware of what actually channel can do. So, we will next see what are the different characteristics of channels of course, we will not go into the details right now we are just touching upon all the topics uh, which needs to be uh, really discussed to actually uh, deal with a communication system. So, what we have so far understood that for a communication system there must be a transmitter okay. uh, before that there must be a source and the transducer which are not part of uh, the transmitter it should be anyway there because otherwise you cannot generate that signal. Once we get the signal after that we need a transmitter which encode the signal we have seen one form of encoding which is called demo, sorry modulation. We will see other form of uh, encoding also later on and then it goes into the channel. Then channel we have to choose accordingly should we choose uh, wireless channel or fiber optics or coaxial cable. Uh, uh, some transmission line twisted uh, pair uh, whatever that uh, media is we have to choose and we have to also know the characteristics of that channel. So, that is very important that we need to exactly understand the characteristics so that we know how the transmitted signal will be actually interpreted at the other end. So, received signal will not be equivalent to the transmitted signal we will see that uh, in the next uh, particular section we will be discussing about that how. Uh, channel actually uh, degrade the performance and how the channel actually uh, change the signal quality. And then from the received signal we need to know how to again decode our signal to get the message back. 
then again a set of trans transducer followed by uh, means whoever is actually getting the information. So, it can be done. Okay. So, this is the chain of communication. Now, you might be asking uh, what are different forms of communication that exist? We have already discussed about point to point communication. So, which is like from one particular point to another particular point uh, or one particular person or one particular source to a particular destination. Uh, that is one form of communication we all uh, are aware of uh, starting from telephony to uh, computer communication and all those things. But there is also another form of communication which is called broadcasting. So, like radio or television where the source is unique and he transmits that transmitted signal must go to multiple receiver simultaneously. So, basically the information content remains the same whatever in broadcasting suppose radio whatever is being transmitted it is not unique for a particular receiver it is same for all the receiver and it has to be simultaneously transmitted to all the receiver and decoded simultaneously by all the receivers. So, that is one form of communication that we already are aware of broadcasting. The other form is uh, point to point which is uh, we call it unicasting one particular point to another particular point. There is in between some other things which is called selective broadcasting or which is also termed as multicasting. So, there if I have multiple receiver not all of them I intend to transmit I might choose some of them, but I will still be transmitting same content to all of them simultaneously okay, whomever I choose. So, these are the different forms of communication that we are aware of we have seen that there are examples of those uh, communication. So, what we will do in the next section we will start talking about our channel what do we mean by channel and how it uh, actually affects our transmission and why it is very important to know the channel very well before we actually devise a communication mechanism.